There we go. All right, so basically this is going to be an upside down parabola. So you're looking for the vertex of the parabola. So definitely jump on Desmos to to have some fun with this. Don't do normal distribution because that's still last period. Uh, y equals 110x minus x squared minus 1,000. And I don't know. I've got to go home and see if we can find it. Uh-oh. So we have this is our parabola. Make it fat. Okay. All right. So we want to find the top of this parabola. So la ti da squeeze and oh, there we got both. Squeeze. All right. So just come up. Find the very tip of your parabola. So it looks like if you create 55 widgets, that would be the maximum profit of $2,025. That's basically how you do that problem. That should be pretty simple, I think. If the profit, and again, um, ignore the um, 0 to 150 and the 0 to 5,000. Um, that's if you're using the graphing calculator, you could jump on with that. So I hope that makes sense. Time. All right, problem number seven says if profit function for a firm is given to by that equation and limitations on space required that you could be capped at 100 units, find the break even point. Okay, so I'm going to change this a little bit. So y equals negative 1100 plus 120x minus x squared and then it says that we are capped at 100 units so it says let's see we're going to go back Take this down to home and find it. So basically, these two values are important for us because they say that is where p at x is equal to zero. So that's important. But then we also know, I have to sneeze, we're going to create 100 units. So that's uh, y equals 100. So basically, these values here, so because of spa space restrictions, looks like you can make 11 or 109 of these items, and that's where your limitation is. And then I don't know why they say find where p at x is equal to 0, or where p at x is equal to 0 is down here. It's so those two values, so at 10 and at 110. That's what's taking place. So you have to realize on that one we're going to have a horizontal line that needs to take place. And then we did number eight, I think, right? Or was that one that we need to work out? Help me out. Did we do number eight or no? I think we did. I think we did. Okay. So we plug in 80, 350. 120, 300, and then you have another equation at 60, 280, and 140, 370. So you're going to have basically two lines crossing. Find that. Number nine, if the profit from the sale of X widgets is that equation, what levels of production will yield a profit of $1,000? Okay. Uh, so we have Y equals 95X. Minus 200 minus x squared. And then profit, profit should be our p value, so y equals 1,000. 1,000. And so I have to scroll up here until I get to 1,000. All right. 
So it looks like if I produce 15 units or 80 units, we're going to get the same profit. There's some sort of um, some sort of thing in place that if you produce more than that, you're make more money. If you produce less than that, it seems funny. Like if you produce 90 units, you're going to be making less money. So it's obviously you know button it against your stuff. So you're just trying to figure out where you'd be making a thousand dollars profit. And then in 1995. America's 45 million Social Security recipients received a 2.6% cost of living increase, the second smallest since smallest increase in nearly 20 years, a reflection of that of lower inflation. The percent increase might be distributed by the equation that's given, where T is the number of years since 1980. In what year does the model predict the highest rate? Okay, so that's going to be a parabola. So I'm going to go y equals for p at t, y equals negative 0.43, oops, negative 0 0.43, 43, x squared plus 8.2, x minus 34.3625. Okay, so I don't even know where this one's going to be at. Oh, there it is. So it says, in what year does this predict the highest? Okay, so our vertex is at 9.371. So if this started in 1995, so it looks like just after 2004, a third of the way through the year, so March, March of uh, 2004 is where you had the highest increase, and that's about where that goes. And we are almost done with our business unit. Let's see. Let's take a look at the business review. And let's see, we have let's see. First pro question on chapter two review it says the company manufactures and sells widgets. Selling price is fifty four ninety per widget. The total cost function is linear and cost fifty thousand for two thousand widgets, thirty two thousand for eight hundred widgets. Find out how many widgets must be sold to break even. All right, so this is all Desmos. So I'm going to go make a table. We're going to go 50,000 and 2,000 and 32, 120 for 800. And this is definitely following, doing a line. So you go Y, use that tilde. Oops, I forgot a 1. Y1 tilde. M X one plus B All right. So a company sells widgets selling for fifty four ninety per widget. So this is our first equation. Let's see, go find that. There's our linear equation. And then I need to go we have Y equals Uh, 5490 times X. So let's figure out where this is at. That's kind of a goofy looking. Well, this isn't going to make sense. Fifty-four point nine per widget. Fifty-eight two thousand. Well, this is, looks to be an impossible situation because we're not going to produce negative twenty-four widgets to have a loss of thirteen hundred and fifty-seven dollars. So somebody needs to double-check this problem. Sorry about that. We failed you.
that we can move on from there. We'll grow. We'll become better. All right. Supply function and demand function for the product are linear and determined by the table it shows. So find the point, find the equilibrium. So I'm going to plug both those into their own table. So I have 200 and 100. And then we have uh, 400 and 200. No coffin today. Mm -mm. Oops. And then 600, 300. All right, so if we find those dots, there's those dots. Looks like it forms a straight line, so I'm going to go Y1, use tilde, MX1, plus B. So there's that linear equation. Then for this next one, I'm going to do our demand function, so we need to make another table. And we're going to go 200 and 200. And then we're going to do... 400, 100. And then we're going to do 600 and 0. Okay. So that's so that takes place. Now, when I want to make this linear equation, I'm not going to use y1 and yx1. I'm going to use x2 and y2. So I'm going to go y2, tilde, mx2, nope, not squared, mx2 plus b. So there's our equation. Our equilibrium point is when we produce 300 units, 150, that's our break even. So that's pretty simple. And then number three, we don't have to worry about the graph. It says of the equations, P plus 6Q equals 420, and P plus equals 6Q plus 60. One is the supply for the product, and one is the demand for the product. Graph the equations. OK, so we can get rid of these. All right, so our p-value is our, our y, right? So I'm going to go y plus 6q. So 6x equals 420. You guys are supposed to chuckle because there's an answer 420 there. Not quite sure what it means. Plus 60. Okay, so that came out nice. Graph the two equations. They're both graphed. Uh, label each supply and demand. So purple and green, whatever. So at 300, 240 is our break-even point in this situation. Then if the demand function on a widget number four is given by p squared plus 5q equals 200 and supply is given by the other equation. Find the equilibrium. You're just graphing them. So I have y squared plus 5x equals 200. There's our sideways parabola. Beautiful. And then the other one is going to be 40 minus y to the second. plus 3x equals 0. So look at that. Two sideways parabolas. Beautiful. OK. Which point seems like the legitimate point to make that we go with? Do we want to deal with negative numbers here? I'd say no. So our break even is at 20 units. We're making 10 bucks. That's our break even. Ignore the negative values. They're not going to affect us. We're just cruising through these. Do you guys have questions about how these work? I guess the big thing to remember when you have P and Q given, P is always the Y, Q is always the X, unless they label it differently. Uh, number five, I don't know if I have to walk through number five. I'm pretty sure you'd be able to 
deal with number five. Number six should be fine as well. Seven. All right. So why don't you guys do this? On that last page, give a try. So this is chapter two review. And if you have any questions, just go through five through nine. We might have a little bit of time to run through any of those tomorrow if you have any questions, but you can work on these. And then we will have our test on Schoology tomorrow, if that's okay with y'all.